Hi, this is the Vista Chronicles from Caracas, episode number nine. My name is Jesus Rodriguez from Orinoco Tribune. And this week, uh, I want to talk about two issues. First, the psychological operations that I feel has been in place for the last two or three weeks in Venezuela. And uh, second, uh, the political scenario in Venezuela, especially uh, the polls that has been released recently on Juan Guaidó and also about the status of the national dialogue table. So first, the psychological operations. Uh, I want to mention that I feel that those black ops have been happening using social media, I mean, Twitter, Facebook, but mostly WhatsApp, at least internally in Venezuela. And uh, they are connected to two areas. The first one is the one related to the census uh, that was recently uh, uh, being announced by the government. And the second connected to the public services uh, like utilities, like internet, uh, water, electricity. So, uh, Talking about the census first, I think that the the government didn't handle, didn't realize the importance of providing accurate and precise information in relation to the census. And that was used to create, using the traditional anti-communist scary fairy tale of uh, I mean, in which the government, the communists are going to take uh, one room of your house uh, if it is empty, or if you have two houses, the, the communists are going to take one of them, or if you have two cars, the government is going to take one. That kind of, uh, like, 40s or 50s uh, anti-communist propaganda, uh, I mean, the opposition took advantage of it. Uh, and 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 it has been using it to spread like panic among especially middle class and upper middle class Venezuela that has been thinking because of the announcement of the census that the government is going to try to occupy property and things like that. And I understand that in a lot of countries the uh, the census always creates a lot of like debate, but in the case of Venezuela, I mean the debate is okay, but it might also, uh, I mean, it's important uh, that you understand that it also can be used to create panic, and that panic can be used to uh, have the enough uh, critical mass to send people to the streets, which is what really the opposition uh, needs in order to uh, put a little bit of pressure on the on the government, on Maduro. So in that sense, it's important to say that for the last, I don't know, like four or six weeks, if you ask me, I mean, uh, the political and the environment in, in Venezuela has been kind of slow, I mean, real slow. Uh, and uh, I was talking with uh, Elizabeth Ferrari, the co-editor and proof reading uh, reader of Orinoco Tribune, and she and I basically told her, "Listen, I feel like when you have kids uh, in your house and they always make a lot of noise, and then suddenly your kids are not making so much noise, you uh, realize that." Something they might be doing something bad, so that's actually what I feel about the opposition right now in Venezuela. I mean, you you don't hear them screaming too much. You don't. They don't. They are not making too much noise, but you know that they uh, are doing something in the background, in the hide. So that's why I believe. I mean, I mean, and that I believe connects with this psychological operation of black operation 
that has been placed in Venezuela in relation to the census. And uh, and why I say that the, that I believe that the government committed a mistake, uh, uh, I say it because if you analyze and we try to cover all the information in relation to the census from the very beginning, and we posted it in Orinoco Tribune, if you analyze if you only analyze what we have posted from official sources, uh, you realize that there are contradictions. I mean, they first talk about something uh, like the census, but they also talk about uh, another plan uh, called supposedly Ubica to Casa, which was like supposedly uh, orientated to uh, to the Gran Mission Vivienda Venezuela in order to identify who occupies some of those buildings of the almost 3 million houses that have been delivered by the government in these last years uh, because uh, the government knows that some people that have received these houses have moved and they have transferred uh, uh, the the houses to people, I mean, that in those houses are people that are not, uh, that were not assigned to live there. So that's part of this so-called Ubica to Casa census. So the government made the announcement about that supposed census, but also the government made the announcement about the census for 2020, and uh, they say that the militia men and women were going to uh, participate in the collecting of information and that created a lot of like panic and some people start saying that they saw Chavista or Colectivos or whatever they say, Circulo Bolivarianos occupying empty uh, houses or apartments and and not none of those rumors uh, were like true, but people here don't need too much of that. I mean, they just believe what circulates in the media, and they believe what they want to believe, and, and most of the upper middle class and middle class Venezuelans are real anti-communist people, and, and, and they just need a little bit of feeding in order to, you know, create a, an alarm or a chaos in their brains. So, uh, in that sense, I, that's why I say that uh, I believe the government didn't uh, provide the accurate information and didn't realize that this mess that was going to be created around this, but the truth is that it, it was created, and it, it, I mean, that operation is still going on. So that's why this week some representatives from the government start to 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 clarify to make it uh, a little bit more clear for Venezuelans uh, about the census and they say that there was non ubica to casa census plan uh, that's what they're saying now but they didn't say that like three weeks ago but anyway they are trying to clarify and let's hope that the clarification helps in you know easing this trend of of Twitters and messages using WhatsApp, and uh, and also I believe that and this is something that has been happening. I I, I feel I I have been feeling it for the last maybe seven days that uh, they are also has been trying to create panic or or hate. I don't I don't know if the word in English is hatred, but but create animosity among Venezuelans in relation, again, to public utilities like electricity and water and internet. And they have been circulating in social media recently, in recent days, information about this service uh, not going well in this part of Caracas or this part of the country or the other one. And people start, like, uh, blaming Maduro and... You know, you you notice that there's something behind those messages, and you notice that there's a trend. So, uh, my opinion is that 
uh, opposition actors specialized in psychology, psychological operations are trying to affect Venezuelan's state of mind in order to provoke a, a like a situation, riots or or or, or squalidos going down the street to guarim to do guarimbas or that kind of stuff because that's the only chance they have to put some pressure in the government. So I just wanted to mention that situation uh, connected to these psychological operations because I believe that we have to pay attention to that and I know that people outside Venezuela not necessarily know or not this this kind of thing. Another important issue that I also noticed this week is uh, the release of these uh, polls saying that uh, Guaido had like an intention, an approval of 40 something percent, and Maduro had an approval of 21 percent or something like that. And I just want everyone outside Venezuela know that if that was true, uh, they should be pushing for elections. I'm talking about the right wingers right now. And the truth is that they are playing. Uh, uh, the game of, you know, waiting and see also. I mean, they are not pushing for elections because they know that they don't have uh, enough votes. And all those polls that sometimes right-wingers inside Venezuela and outside Venezuela present uh, are the polls that usually uh, are lost in the space when uh, we have elections in Venezuela and Chavismo win. So don't pay too much attention to polls in Venezuela because most of them are controlled by right-wingers. And they usually uh, they just present information that the, their patrons, patrons uh, want to see. So don't pay too much attention to that. But I wanted to highlight that to you because uh, you see a lot of noise about that in social media, especially in Twitter. So the truth is that if you ask me if we have elections right now in Venezuela, under current circumstances, Maduro is going to win. Actually, I was listening to a radio program on a very anti-Chavista uh, radio uh, in which an opposition guy was... Uh, was talking about the, the fact that in all those polls regarding what they say about approval ratings, the PSUV is the party that uh, that have the majority of the approval. So, so the reality is that Chavismo is still uh, running this country. And uh, just to end this podcast today that I wanted to do uh, outside, to change a little bit the environment for the for the podcast. Um, I wanted to finish talking about the National Dialogue Table. And uh, as I already mentioned in other programs, uh, I think that that's the only option that we have in Venezuela to reach some sort of agreement or peaceful solution to the situation in the country. And uh, the the... I mean, there are already results that can be seen, like the release of this uh, uh, deputy, the vice president of the National Assembly that was in jail after the April 2, the tar attempt promoted by Guaido and Leopoldo Lopez. So uh, that was, that is an important, uh, like, result, and also the 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 PSUB bench rejoining the National Assembly was another important event connected, I mean, like a result of this National Dialogue Table. So a lot of people are, are expecting the release of new, uh, what the right-wingers call uh, political prisoners and that we call uh, politicos presos, I mean, uh, in jail politicians, but um, it's important that the government 
uh, I'm saying this because I've seen that this last week not too many things happened in relation to the national dialogue table, and I am among the ones that believe that the government and the opposition, of course, needs to start showing some more results in connection to this initiative because if they don't do so, I mean, the the alternative to a violent resolution to the Venezuelan crisis uh, might increase, and we have to try to avoid that. So I believe that it's important to push the national dialogue table in order to produce more results. I understand that this last week there was like a, an important international campaign from the Venezuelan government, Maduro's government perspective, but we need to keep pushing the national dialogue table, and I believe that that's what's going to happen this week that is about to start. So thank you again for listening to us. Uh, please pay attention to our website. We are going to initiate soon a fundraising campaign because we are about to be one year old, and we need to pay a lot of service providers in order to improve our website to make it better and uh, to avoid using uh, advertisement in the website. We have been for the last two or three days testing some advertisement tools, but uh, that's something that we are going to uh, lift up soon uh, because we don't want to use it right now, but for that we need uh, a little bit more of donations on your side. We have been receiving some donations in recent days or weeks for the last couple of weeks, and we are happy because of that, but we need more to keep this project alive. We don't receive uh, funding from the Venezuelan government. We don't receive funding from advertisement, so we can on you in order to keep this project alive. So thank you a lot for listening to us, and uh, uh, we hope to see you back next week. Bye-bye.